Hello my friends and welcome back to the rabbit hole. Today's video is going to be an entire video of me trying makeup that I think I will hate. Disclaimer, disclaimer, you know we gotta have one, don't worry, it's not for you guys, it's for the legal teams. You know I'm gonna tell you exactly like it is. First off, this video is only my opinion, but maybe even more importantly than that, it's really just hyperbole. I don't hate in a true sense these brands, or I wouldn't feature them on my channel. If there's really a brand that I don't support, you will never see it, no exceptions. But I do have my own reasons for why I have a bias against either the product itself or the brand, and what I'm hoping to do in this video is to you know acknowledge that I have these biases first off and then to kind of break through it. Also, do we like the shirt? Do we like the shirt? Is it is it too early in the year? I never really know. I bought this after the holiday sales last year from Jamie Koala. Ugh. To this day I love Jamie Koala, one of my favorite brands for geek clothing. Alright, we're gonna start this video off with a Kylie Cosmetics palette. What's the name of this? Kylie? Pressed powder palette? Is that the name of it? Kylie Kylie Jenner? Secret location? What if I open it? Maybe there's a name on the inside. Oh, there is. Sipping Pretty. It's actually really nice quality. I prefer cardboard palettes. I like the size of it. Okay, you're getting some points with me. This uh, glitter is already getting everywhere, so that's a deduction in points. Even though I love glitter, I don't really like it on the outside of palettes. I already have my Bare Minerals primer down today, so we're gonna start with setting that just a little bit. I'll talk to you guys about my bias against Kylie Cosmetics. I don't think it's anything very deep, it's just that I don't think I'm ever gonna be the kind of person that the Kylie brand really resonates with. Let's call a spade a spade here. I'm a little old, right? I mean, I'm just outside of that window of understanding the Kylie thing. But let me tell you guys what, I would be lying to you if I said that I don't deep down understand it, especially among, uh, you know, early 20s age groups. I, I get it. I was a teenage goth. I've definitely talked about this on this show. Oh, it's more pigmented than I thought it would be. Uh, yeah, so I was a, a teenage goth, uh, you know, primarily listened to what? Joy Division, Bauhaus, Apoptigma Berserk. But in secret, I listened to Britney Spears. Oh, I listened to Britney Spears and I loved her. Would I admit this in public? Absolutely not. What was I going to do? Have a conversation about Britney at the castle, Ebor? Thankfully, I feel like you grow out of these things and you learn to just like things because you like them and that's totally okay. So the other controversy with Kylie Cosmetics is that it's made out of the same lab as ColourPop, I believe, isn't Tati's palette also? I really, I haven't followed the Tati release that well. I think her palette's beautiful, but you, you, see, you see the colors that I go for. I'm gonna be honest with you that I actually don't think that that necessarily means a lot. I really don't because there's a couple of things to keep in mind with ColourPop's model versus Kylie Jenner's. And the biggest one is with ColourPop, their products are priced very, very low and their, their turnover is extremely high. Basically, ColourPop's model is to release a product and if the public loves it, great, keep promoting it. If they don't, eh, just kind of quietly stop making it. Very few people are gonna get tremendously upset if they don't love a product that was, what, $10? And this model is how they keep their prices so low. You know, they don't really do extensive testing on the products to make sure that if people are spending 30, 40, 50 dollars on their products, they won't get upset if they don't love it. Instead, the public tests the products. And you know, it, it works as long as your model is affordable. Kylie, on the other hand, I do feel like Kylie's lab probably does a lot more testing on their products in advance. I'm really getting that feeling just from the three shades I've used so far. These are all working absolutely beautifully, whereas I feel like occasionally with the ColourPop palette, I'll run into a couple of shades that just don't perform tremendously well, but I forget about them because, you know, there's eight other shades in the palette. And that's not all. It is true that just because products are made on the same equipment in the same lab, it doesn't mean that the ingredients going into that are the same. Let's work this to this to this to this eyeshadow here. It's one of those mattes with shimmer, but I, I, feel like, I feel like we can pat it on and make it work. I'm getting a lot of fallout with this one. That's actually, 
Honestly, that Fallout does remind me of ColourPop, especially their super shimmery shades. I gotta be honest with you guys, I'm currently feeling about as surprised as I was when I found out uh, Sicko Mode was one song instead of three. This is a really good palette. It's a really good formula in particular. I think that with a lot of drugstore formulas, you can build them up to a really good level and you can easily replicate a high-end look. But to me, if a palette is gonna be 40, 50, 60 dollars, it needs to be of the quality where you don't need to build it up, where you get a good amount of color immediately upon application and it needs to last, it just, it needs to be worth that extra money. Now am I gonna become a giant Kylie fan? I mean, probably not. Overall, the color scheme in this palette, while I obviously played with the bright colors because I am still me at the end of the day, uh, yeah, there's a lot of colors in here that I'll try, but I don't see myself gravitating towards a ton of new releases, per se. I do not have as high of hopes for this product. I kind of, well, let me tell you the story. So I got an email from Ulta in the middle of my grand shopping experience. I spent about, I guess about $250 in a week, which is very unlike me, very unlike me. I usually, I, I, if I spend that in a month, I'm surprised. But I got into buying mode and then Alta went and sent me an email saying, three days only, get the Stila lingerie souffle for 50% off, $19 for a foundation. So I was like, okay, I'll buy it. They're saying this is an opulent water-based mousse foundation, melts on contact, blending into skin, skin-loving formula. <laughs> get ready for this, all of those of you who read uh, critically. Formulated with natural botanicals and over 70% water. 70% water? I've never heard of this! No, actually every foundation has water as the first ingredient. The reviews on this are pretty bad. Now I'm good at making things work. I really want to make my $19 purchase here work, so I'm going to try it. I'm going to go... Do I want to apply a primer? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to stick with the primer that I'm familiar with. We're going to stick with the powder that I'm familiar with so we can just test this foundation, but I got to go wash my hands. So I'll be right back. I feel like this is going to be not a lot of coverage, first of all. It seems that the people who do enjoy this, which those reviews do exist, those people were saying that it is more, more like a tinted moisturizer, I believe. For those of you who watch all my videos, this stuff right here is, is clearing up. I'm very happy to see that. These guys came to the surface. That was pretty painful. We're going to baby them today, kind of work around them for the most part, but I think we can still test this foundation. I still need to look nice. I got go places tonight. All right, guys, moment of truth. Wow, that's an interesting texture. What on earth? Wait a minute, guys. Hold on. This is going on nicely. Is it? Uh-oh. I think it found a dry patch over here. Uh-oh. What, what the heck is that? What is going on with this? It's like where it's applying nicely, it's going on gorgeously, but where it's not, whoa, it's not looking good. Oh, what the, what is this? Well, let's just put more on. Holy guacamole, this looks horrifying on my, oh, I regret this. No, it's already dry, I need to work with it more. Oh, no, no. What is happening? Oh, this is awful. Okay, take a brush in, try to fix up this, these nonsense areas as fast as we can. Oh, no. What is this? You gotta like work with it really fast. <gasps> I don't work with things fast. I'm slow. I'm a snail. Okay, so if you try to go back in over it and cover more, it takes... Oh, this is bad. Oh my God, no matter what I do, it will not stick here. Oh my God, this is, this is so bad. No way that I'm ever trying this again. Ain't no way, ain't no way, ain't no way. In my personal opinion, this might be one of the worst foundation products that I've ever tried. Wow, it started off feeling kind of nice. It immediately blended out to look nice, but you had maybe 10, I had maybe 10 seconds before it dried. And once it dried, it was extremely dry. I'm sure this works for somebody, but I'm returning this. It's been a long time since I've returned a product too. 
So thankfully, I don't have too many more face products to try in this video, so I guess we can just get these couple over with. I want to try this RMS Buriti Bronzer. I'm not really a big RMS person. I personally think their products are very expensive coconut oil. And as I've said before, I really hate for- Oh my god, it has the same texture as the foundation! It has the exact same texture as the foundation I just tried. Oh no, oh no, oh no! <laughs> Mario! <laughs> oh wait, no it doesn't, it's actually blending in- Ooh, actually! Hold on! Can you save me, RMS? Well, golly gee willikers, this is going on nicely, but again, it does have- I think it has coconut oil. I actually didn't check. Uh, a lot of people cannot use coconut oil, so be warned. I also never quite know how to blend creamy products up into my hairline. It's like asking for trouble for my hair for the next day. I genuinely feel that that actually helped me to fix the disaster of a foundation situation that I had going on. Uh, now, all that said, the second ingredient in this is coconut oil. I used so little that I'm going to try to get a second use. Yeah, you are a mess. My advice for you, as if you're going to watch this video, which you're not, but if you were, uh, you should send out those gift with purchase sizes through Sephora. I feel like that's one of the biggest problems with any products containing coconut oil, is people have got to find out for themselves if coconut oil works on their skin or doesn't. And the, the best way to do that is not to send out a foil packet where people get maybe two uses, but to send out a product where people can use it for two weeks. I mean, if this applies this way every time, I might consider buying this. This went really well. I'm gonna set with powder and then we're gonna come back for Morphe. Morphe High Impact Highlighter. I never buy from Morphe. I'll tell you guys the whole deal with me and Morphe. Get Lit, a daringly creamy zero gravity highlighter for explosive prismatic effects. This is the shade Spark. Oh, this is actually gorgeous, if not too pigmented, to be honest with you. It's, it's certainly highlighting some texture, but it is a very pretty highlighter. I bet if you're younger, you would like this a little more than I do. Here's my theory on Morphe. I think that Morphe is a drugstore brand. Their prices are affordable, and what happened is a lot of influencers kind of started pushing them as uh, the same quality and or better quality than some of the high-end brands. And I'll give you an example that I've lived through. This is the Morphe M3, M433, which a lot of people called a direct dupe for the MAC 217. Fact is, I use the MAC 217 easily 20 times more, if not more like 50 times more than the Morphe. Uh, and while the shape is similar, do you see the glaring difference? This is frayed everywhere. It came out of the package like that. My MAC brush gets used five times a week and still is barely fraying. So is it really, is it really that close of a dupe? Probably not, because at the end of the day, if this is frayed this much at this point in time, uh, you know, I, then if I was using it as often as I use this, I'd probably have to replace it, which means ultimately I'm spending the same amount of money as I spent on this MAC brush. Uh, I feel like this happens with other products as well. Their eyeshadow palettes, you know, people say it's the same as high-end. I think you can get the same exact look as you can from a high-end product, but you may have to build it up more. So you end up getting this situation where it's like, well, how much is what the influencer's saying? Oh, it's the exact same. How much is that true? if it's kind of the same, but then kind of not. This is the same exact intensity that I might get from an Ofra highlighter, but it's more texture. Again, another indication to me that it's not the exact same quality. Next up, we're trying the Hourglass Caution Extreme Lash Mascara. I don't think I'm gonna hate this for the record. I think I might like it too much and wanna buy it and then be mad at myself for loving a product that's really expensive. Wait a minute, so far I look like I have four eyelashes. What's going on here? I'm gonna tell you guys honestly, at this point, I don't really even wanna recommend or not recommend mascaras because I've come to realize, I think mascara might be one of the most personal products on the market, meaning you might love a mascara and then the next person comes along and says, no, that's the absolute worst mascara out there. It's just, it really boils down to individual preference. Two things. First off, I understand the mascara. It builds up on itself in ways that I do feel like a lot of mascaras do not. So you can keep building and building and come really close to that false lash look. So I understand the hype with this. That said, it does get clumpy. If you do not own a metal lash comb, you might hate this because I needed that metal lash comb or I was not gonna have a good day as if the foundation situation wasn't bad enough. 
Secondly, apologies if my lips looked really rough the last few minutes. I just noticed that the foundation had dried down on them and it was actually torture to get it off my lips. I am... I'm gonna remove this foundation as soon as this video is over, but let's try the last product. Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Lips Matte Contour Liquid Lipstick. This is the shade Charlotte Darling. Uh, I have an unnecessary bias against Charlotte Tilbury. The sole reason is because I've bought a lot of her products and been underwhelmed. I felt like they don't live up to the price tags, but let's, let's give this one a go. This is not a matte liquid lipstick at the slightest. This is a, um, a creamy lipstick. I feel like I had to put this on and then take some off because there's like hard bits to it. How much is this dang product? How much? I gotta find my, where's my phone? Where did I, oh. $34? Like I don't hate it, but I don't understand why it's $34. And I feel like that summarizes my experience with Charlotte Tilbury as a whole. I don't hate it, but why is it so expensive? Let's recap for some final thoughts. I'm gonna go ahead and rank everything in this video in terms of how much I liked it. So that means first pick here, Kylie Jenner. This palette was actually really nice quality. It makes me wonder, now in retrospect, the only other Kylie product I tried I did buy on eBay. It makes me wonder if it wasn't real. Uh, because yeah, this was good. This was some good quality. In my second spot, RMS, I don't know how you did it, but you're coming in second. I don't want to come on camera after a first impression and sound like I'm recommending this, but rather to tell you that I want to try it more to decide if it's something I'd be interested in going forward. It was a very good first impression, especially for somebody who rarely likes bronzer. Uh, but yeah, I, I really hope I can get at least one more, one more try out of this. I'm gonna put the Hourglass Caution Mascara as number three. It kind of started out a little rough, but I, I actually suspect with this one, it may be a very different experience to use the full size versus the mini size here. Uh, we've talked about this in other videos before. I felt like it was kind of hard to work with, and maybe that's solely because of the size. I actually like the end result. It did build up really well. Uh, number four, I'm gonna give to this Morphe highlighter. Even though I don't love it, I actually do, as is usually the case with Morphe. I think it's an okay product. I can see that there would be an audience for it, even though my assumption is the audience is probably younger than I am. Number five, Charlotte, your liquid lipstick here. Uh, it's comfortable on. It's definitely different. I gotta give it that. I feel like this is one I gotta at least try more than once, just like the bronzer. And then in last place, you already know, it's this... <sighs> oh, I, I really am going to go wash all this off my face because this is, this is not cute. I don't look cute. Thank you guys for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.